Welcome back, viewers, friends, and family of YouTube. This is Eric KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts, showing you another neat device that's still newer on the market. But remember when D-Star came out? And then Fusion came out, and people said, oh, no, what mode do I do? And then they had D-Star dongles, and they had DMR dongles, and then people came up to things with hotspots that do all the modes. And then you've seen the Nano Spot, which was... Quite pricey, but did all four modes. And now you see the Jumbo Spot. And the Jumbo Spot is less than half the price of a Nano Spot with all the same features, comes fully assembled, and just a neat thing to have in your ham shack here or mobile. Everybody's talking about hotspots today. Everybody wants to know which hotspot to get. And the reason I purchased this to make a video was because I saw a lot of people online. This is called the Jumbo Spot. And a lot of people had problems with it. They said, oh, I tried, I had the nano spot, I tried the zoom spot, or I tried the jumbo spot, and I had problems, I can't get it working. Let me show you how confident I was when I bought one to get it set up for you on video. Not only do I have one, <laughs> but I have 25. I purchased 25 hotspots with all my hard saved up cash, and if you're interested in one of these jumbo spots, okay, instead of waiting six weeks from China, you can support Ham Radio Concepts and get one through me today and have it within days priority mail. If you're interested, contact me through my website on the contact form. And um, 105 bucks shipped to you is the going price on these things. But we're going to talk about setting this thing up and really what it does because Again, people said, well, I got it set up. I see my call sign on here. I can see people, but I can't hear. And there's a couple little bugs when it comes to these. And I, I knew it. China was going to come up with these hotspots. And Rival, you know, they want a piece of this market. And basically, this is, again, the same thing as a lot of the other hotspots you've seen. It comes with MM, it's running MMDVM Pi Star. comes preloaded on the 8-gig Kingston memory card that's built in. Uh, comes with the antenna. The only thing it doesn't come with is the cable. The cable here is just a regular micro USB that you use for your cell phone or other hotspots. If you can see that, if my camera wants to get that with the lighting, there it is. Uh, a very easy, you know, to find micro USB hotspot. Uh, so micro USB cord. OLED on the front shows you all your um, information on there, and. You can run this with your portable battery bank, your solar battery bank, as you've seen in another hotspot video of mine. Those are widely available on eBay for 15 bucks. I even put a link in Amazon uh, in my description of the solar battery bank that I have that you can run with this. So you can keep it all portable in your vehicle, keep this powered and your phone charged with the USB battery bank, and be on the road with DMR, D-Star, C4FM, or P25, all running simultaneously uh, with a hotspot like this. No, you can't use D-Star to go on DMR or D-Star to go to Fusion. There is a Fusion, a DMR bridge now, and some other cool bells and whistles coming out. But this will run all four modes if you had four separate radios, not talking about the Fusion to DMR bridge. But if you have a D-Star radio, you can use this as a D-Star hotspot. If you have a Fusion radio, you can use this as a Fusion hotspot. And it does everything that the Nano spot and all the other spots do, but at the fraction of a cost uh, with, uh, you know, all the features built in. So let's talk about the Jumbo Spot 4-mode digital hotspot and uh, see what it's all about. My channel caters to mostly new people into the hobby or people into the hobby 50 years that are new to some aspects of the hobby. So just typing in ham radio hotspot on a Google search for images shows you a lot of different options of hotspots. Which one do you get? Which one will you need? Well, this video is showing you about this one and I have other videos on the Shark RF and the DV Mega and the Bluestack. But the hotspot is basically this. It's taking your radio on RF transmitting into the hotspot through the internet and coming out somewhere else in the world with a repeater or a hotspot on the other end. So yes, you do need a radio to operate this hotspot. 
and you do need a specific radio for a certain mode. If you want to use this as a D-Star hotspot, you need a D-Star radio. If you want to use it as a DMR hotspot, you need a DMR radio. So it is bridging the gap between the people that don't have ham radio repeaters in their area. I remember back in the day when I bought a fusion radio, there was no fusion repeaters in my area. Now we have six in the area, and I own a repeater myself. But there was nothing. The only way to get on fusion back in the day was with a hotspot. And now there's repeaters almost everywhere. But the, to those who are traveling and you don't know where the repeaters are, or you just want to have your own hotspot on your desk and not tie up the local repeater, a hotspot is for you. So if you buy one of these online, you get some sort of instructions from China that help you try to get going. But this video should hopefully not even make you look at this because I didn't look at this. A little bit hard to understand, but what I want you to see, if I can zoom in, is this what they included right here. Receive offset negative 475. Remember that number. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, about an eight-minute setup process. Let me walk you through it to eliminate any problems you may have. The very first thing you need to do is tell this hotspot what your Wi-Fi settings are. It has no idea how to connect to your router until you tell it how. And there's no way to enter in a password on the front of the Wi-Fi hotspot here. So what we're going to do is go to this website, which is in the description, pystar.uk slash Wi-Fi underscore builder dot php and it's going to take you to here and all you really need to do is your ssid the name of your wi-fi and your password okay what this is going to do is generate a quick config file that you're going to download and put on the root of your sd card this makes the unit boot up look at this config and say okay that's the router I need to connect to. So copy this to your root of your SD, turn on the hotspot, you know, plug it in, boot it up, and give it about two minutes the very first time here, about two minutes to set up. And you're not going to, don't get scared, you're not going to see anything on the screen. You're going to see a green light with maybe a red blinking light, but give it about two minutes. When you do, you're going to go to this website, http colon slash slash pi dash star. And this isn't a website, it's a URL for an IP address, okay? And there it is. Here is my dashboard of the Pi Star, which tells me it's successfully connected to my Wi-Fi. At this point, I know my Wi-Fi is working. We're going to go to configuration. Now, there's a lot of configuration stuff in here, and some of it I'm not aware of what it does. But I'm going to tell you just what I did to get this running in less than 10 minutes. And you can research and play with what you want. Now, the first thing you notice is there's a lot of boxes here. Every time you edit one of these fields, like this con general configuration, you want to apply changes when you edit this. Filling this whole page out and hitting apply on the bottom is only going to save wherever you push that button. So up here, it's already on MMDVM host and simplex node. We're going to leave that alone. That's where you want to be. Uh, here, general configuration. I'm going to change my call sign. I'm going to put in my DMR. Oh, we'll do that in a second. Uh, the frequency. So we're going to pick a frequency of something that is simplex suitable for a hotspot. You don't want to put a repeater input or output frequency. You don't want to put your local UHF repeater frequency in there to make it easy for you to program. You want to put a frequency. For this video, I'm going to pick 435.500. Make sure it's in the amateur spectrum uh, and, and not on a beacon frequency or out of the UHF uh, spectrum. Um, your latitude longitude is so people can look up the location of this hotspot. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone for now. Town. Sure, why not? People want to know I'm in Vero Beach, Florida when I'm using my hotspot. Country? USA. URL? I'm just going to put our call sign at the end, and that way people can look up your bio on QRZ with a link. This is all informational right here. Um, uh, the town, country, and URL. Now, modem type. Very important. You're going to do this twice. Uh, you just, you, this is, there's a lot of modems in here and a lot of different features. What you want to be concerned with is this. STM32-DVM uh, slash MDM, MMDVM, HS, Raspberry Pi Hat, GPIO. You want to click this one here. Now, it may work with other ones. There may be other things to do with it. That's what you're going to click on for this video. Private node, America, New York, or wherever your time zone is in your language. Now, with this box here, click Apply. And it's going to take about 20 seconds, and it's going to reboot. So I'll fast forward the video here. 
At this point, it's rebooting, applying changes, but you still see nothing on the screen. Do not panic. It does say the modem selection has been updated. Okay? So we're going to reconfigure the modem here. We're going to pick that again. STM, DVM, Raspberry Pi hat. Everything else should stay the same. The only thing you have now is your DMR ID. Make sure you put that in there. This is a, a big deal that people don't put their DMR ID in their program of the radio or the hotspot, and it has no idea who you are or where it's, you know, talking to. So I have this information, my call sign, DMR ID, frequency, everything. Hit apply. Now it's going to do the same thing. It's going to reboot, do this. I'm going to fast forward. Okay, configuration, rebooting. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have this, the MMDVM host configuration. That wasn't there before. And this is where you're going to select the modes that you want this hotspot to operate. You can pick all the modes if you want. For this video, I'm only going to keep DMR enabled because my D-Star radio is in the car at the moment. And uh, the uh, DMR radio is in my hand. I don't have a fusion radio at this moment. Don't have anything P25. So I'm going to do DMR. Now this right here, display type. This is why you can't see squat on your screen because it has no idea where to output the information. Is it going to the OLED, which is on the front of the hotspot? Yes. Or it could be going to a next-gen display or somewhere else. We're going to click OLED and click Apply. Now, after about 15 seconds, you should see the MMDVM logo scrolling on the screen. 15, 20 seconds, somewhere there. Don't panic. If you don't see it after a couple minutes, something's wrong. But after about 15 seconds, you should see that light up on the screen as it's rebooting. Uh, and then you know you have your... You know, hotspot is coming along just fine. And there it is on my screen. You can't see it. But uh, this is going to do the configuration. Now, uh, one more thing about this top section as it comes back. The hang time. Uh, what the hang time is for is if you have all these modes checked, you want to have a hang time here so that if, if this was set to one second, that means when you let go of the transmit on DMR, after a second, if there's any other mode in use, it's going to switch to that mode. And that gets really frustrating. When you're talking about having uh, four modes running at one time, you know there's always somebody on D-Star, always somebody on Fusion. So 20 seconds is about adequate. And that way, if nobody's talking in 20 seconds, then chances are your conversation's over and it's going to go back into scan. And it's going to listen for all these modes that you have selected. All right. Moving on down, there's our stuff. Our ID is still there. Our modem's still there. We'll go down here to DMR configuration. Now this will change for D-Star and Fusion. Uh, if you want to set those up, you'll have your own configuration for each mode. So DMR master, um, I'm going to leave that on gateway and I'm going to change the master to USA um, 3102 Brandmeister because that's close enough to me. But you can choose a lot of different Brandmeister master servers. I'll pick 3102 for this video. And the DMR plus master, I'm going to pick uh, USA Florida because that's close to me. All right. And the color code for me is one. And that's it. I don't have to touch anything else here unless you know what you're looking for. And click apply. And I'll fast forward. Now I'm seven minutes and 22 seconds of film that you've already seen. And we're pretty much done. This should stay on private because you don't want people logging into your hotspot somewhere else and changing things. But you can see here my interface is up. I'm connected to the WAN or LAN. Uh, so my Wi-Fi is up. There's my IP address of my hotspot. And, um, you know, everything else here, your wireless information. So you can tell if you have a good signal or not. Now, at that point, I can get on DMR right now and key this radio, which will switch cameras after. And I can use it. There are other features in here, such like if we go to the dashboard. So the dashboard is great for information to show you, you know, what mode you're transmitting on recently heard um, your bit error rate, you know, packet loss. So there's two things I want you to remember here. Number one is if you're sitting in front of the radio or the hotspot and you are uh, on five watts or 10 watts with these handhelds, transmitting five, five feet away or, or five inches away from this thing, you could potentially get packet loss and bit error rate. It's all ones and zeros. And if you overdrive the front end of this hotspot, and it garbles it, it turns zeros into ones and ones into zeros. That's when you have packet loss and you, you can't, you know, nobody can hear you. So keep in mind 
one of your test questions when you got your license was use the least amount of possible power to make the contact. No sense of being on 10 watts, five inches from the hot spot. Okay, keep it on extremely low power, as low as you can get when you're sitting in front of it. Now, that's the first thing. The second thing is not all radios or receivers or transmitters are made alike or perform alike. So what you want to know is you may get bit error rate on yours a little higher than your buddy that bought one from a different source because maybe your radio was built on a Friday and his was built on a Tuesday. And on Tuesday, they got a new shipment of parts that were 0.8% better. So the bit error rate, you remember that paper I showed you that had that offset number? That's This is where a lot of people have issues. And I'm going to show you where this is at. If you go into configuration, well, first let me show you. If I transmit KJ4 YZI testing hotspot, you can see there I was transmitting, and there's my bit error rate, 0.2%. It's almost perfect. Okay, if you go into configuration and you go to expert, keep in mind anything that you mess with. Thanks, Jim. Uh, so anything you play with in here is going to uh, potentially knock you out of service if you don't know what you're doing. So we're going to just be concerned with this MMDVM host and the expert. Here's my settings here, and I'm going to go right down here to this. There's that number I showed you on the paper, the negative 475. The manufacturer has determined that this module here in this hotspot is, I guess that would be, negative 475 hertz off of the original frequency meaning it's not exactly on frequency and they've identified that with a negative 475 now i've seen people that bought it and it had a sticker on there that said negative 500 or negative 350 not there's no two manufacturers making the exact same radio to spec maybe they have a better analyzer in one shot than another who knows so what you need to be concerned with is this this hotspot comes with this in here unless you factory reset it that's going to go to zero but let's say you're using a better handheld or a cheaper handheld than I am. Let's say your bit error rate is 5% with the settings I just showed you. You can play with this number and try a different offset to see if maybe, you know, your hotspot, maybe you get a better bit error rate when you lower this number or raise this number. Maybe your best bit error rate is negative 225. I guess you can go positive as well, but keep in mind that with negative 475, my radio worked out of the box. That's because that's what the uh, manufacturer had put on there. Some boards come with a zero here, and when it comes with a zero, if you, if their transceiver is or their hotspot is negative 4 450 hertz off, I guess that's hertz. Uh, that means you're transmitting on. 45 or 435.0 and it's actually listening on 434.600 so you know with the offset that kind of gets it right in line with the frequency that you have on your radio now uh, you can play with this go in small increments and check on your transmit and see what it's doing to the bit error rate you may find a spot where it's hey it's negative 200 and I got 0.1 percent bit error rate there you go that's where a lot of people are having trouble with these and this is, um, you know, these again are coming with the negative 475 in them unless you factory reset it. And if it's not, you know to put negative 475 in there because that's what these were, this batch was quoted for. All right, the rest of this I'm not going to play with. And keep in mind when you make an adjustment here, you hit apply changes to this section here. So it saves that. And again, your, your results may vary, but out of the box, negative 475 that was in there already worked just fine. But it's up to you to determine what your best settings are for that. Okay, and that's uh, even people that have zoom spots and, and nano spots and everything. It's the same thing. Some people are, most everybody has to tweak it. So let's go to the radio and see and just talk to Jim instead of asking him for a uh, radio report through the hotspot. I was using the uh, GD77 before. I was trying this... Uh Bofeng or Baofeng. I've gotten corrected today on YouTube that my last video was uh, incorrectly pronounced, but we all know what it is, right? Status on here. You know, everything is normal to a Pi Star hotspot. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know what uh, we all know what it is. So, <laughs> Baofeng, Bofeng, Bofeng, Baofeng, whatever. It's, it's an expensive radio.
Have you checked out one of these jumbo spots, Jim? Uh, what do you think of them? People might say, well, I don't use DMR, Eric. I use D-Star. So let's enable D-Star and hit apply. And then we're going to check out the D-Star configuration here. You know, um, I didn't change the remote password. Uh, the default reflector, basically, if I wanted to log into the local reflector to me, that would be 078 Charlie or Bravo or Delta. Um, the APRS host, so the APRS for your D star, uh, I'll pick one that is um, United States. Uh, let's see. There we go. Arkansas sounds good. Arkansas APRS. And we'll set the English language, and we'll hit apply. Now it's set up for D star. The rest of the D star configuration is going to be in your programming of your radio. And this was a gray area with the nano spot. I must have answered about 350 emails before I had enough of it because a lot of the configuration that I, I did was uh, in the radio. Yes, you can change reflectors with the D star handheld or mobile. You can change the settings. You don't have to log into the Pi Star to change the reflector. That's just a reflector it's going to start up on, is 078 Charlie. However, you're going to need to set a programmed uh, frequency for a simplex on D Star in the uh, DR mode and set it up accordingly. And there's a lot of other information out there about that. The reason I'm not going into that is because some people use DR mode, some people don't, some people program it this way, some people borrow code plugs and they have no idea how to program a D-Star radio, but their buddy gave them an SD card and that's how they know it is. So they set the hotspot to the buddy's D-Star frequency because that's what's on the SD card and it doesn't work. So you need to, I'm going to give you a little bit of oomph to learn how D-Star programming works so you can educate yourself on that. If I walk you through it, you won't learn. So with the ASUS System Fusion, all I'll say is this. There's only two settings here. The startup host, which you would want to pick, you know, something that's where, where you want it to start up on. Like if I clicked on uh, the U.S. Brandmeister, that's the cross link from US uh, Fusion to Brandmeister, or if I just go nationwide, that'll be, you know, America link and the APRS host for that. Now, you hit apply changes. Again, the, you no, know, you cannot do wires X on this unit. And that is because Yesu doesn't want wires X on these hotspots. They will lose the functionality and the, the, uh, you know, the value of their Wires X interface and Wires X enabled radios. If everybody can go through a hotspot, why would they need an HRI 200 or a radio that does Wires X? So, there's reasons for that. But you can start up the host here, and there are, you know, instructions out there on how to use Fusion over Pi Star to enable different functionality for changing, uh, you know, uh, reflectors and stuff. We're not going to get into that today. I, I can't answer all those emails on why you can't get it working, but I can do my best to show you how to get this thing up and running. I'm not going to talk about P25 or NXDN because I'm not familiar with those modes, so I'll leave it to the professionals out there on YouTube. You can update the uh, firmware here in the update by simply uh, uh, clicking it when you're connected to the internet, and there it goes. It runs updates. Overall, I think it's a great value. These things are going all day long for about 105 to 110 bucks online and uh you know it's 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 inevitable china is going to make these hotspots people are going to buy these hotspots it is a working hotspot yes um i hope this video has cleared up some of the issues because uh, i had to try it for myself i wanted to say well i did it the nano spot no problem and you know nobody wants to pay that much for a nano spot and i get it so then people bought these and they, they were discouraged. And I don't want you to be discouraged unless maybe you did get a defective unit. Who knows? But, uh, you know, a real simple setup. Pi Star runs on multiple devices, not just the jumbo spot. Um, 
there are other things on here I didn't explain, like the looks like a mini HDMI out here that you can hook up an external uh, display, or maybe you want to buy this online in kit form. There are sellers out there selling this in kit form where you can put it together and program it yourself. Great. Now, there's somebody on Fusion right there. Automatically switches, you know, and shows you what mode is in use at that time. So um, I hope the video cleared things up for you. And, you know, there, there are videos out there that really get in depth of these things and show you how these things tick inside. Um, there are those that want to use a hotspot because it's easy and cheap. There are those who want to build their own hotspots, and that's perfectly fine. You can do that. It makes you more educated. Myself, never put together a hotspot, but I've seen a lot of the guys back in the day when you had to code the Raspberry Pi to put the sport on, and there are some advantages to open spots and DV Megas. I'm not opposed to those. But for an out-of-the-box solution that works for what you need it um, at a, a decent price, uh, the Jumbo Spot, Fully assembled seems to be the way to go uh, at this time. Three months from now, hopefully we have another, another hot spot on the market. But until then, thanks for watching. I hope it cleared it up. Leave a comment below. Um, and thanks for watching. 7-3. Uh, more videos on the way from KJ4YZI.